So energy is interesting, but it is more interesting if you can determine how much energy we have. So we are going to be using a technique called calorimetry in determining the amount of energy something has. You'll notice that I have a new term here, and that is called enthalpy. Seems like a strange term. And if you look, we have an enthalpy pirate. He will steal your jewels. Well, I'm hoping you remember, jewels are not just the fancy shiny kind, but they are also the unit of measure of energy. Well, enthalpy is a little bit different than just energy. Enthalpy is the total kinetic and potential energy of a chemical system under constant pressure. Well, remember, we can find the kinetic energy of a system using the formula mc delta t. We can get the mass, know the specific heat capacity of the substance, know the temperature change that it went through, and we can determine its kinetic energy or its energy due to the motion of the molecules. But molecules have more energy than just their motion. They have energy found within their, in, within their chemical bonds or their intermolecular bonds. And that energy is due to position. So if we look at this picture here, we've got methane, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. Well, we definitely know that the molecules are moving. And if they're moving, they have kinetic energy, which we can find through mc delta t. So these are just movement bars I'm drawing. However, also there are forces of attraction, covalent bonds, holding these atoms together. Energy due to position here is considered potential energy. So the energy found within the system is not just the mc delta t of their motion, but the potential energy found within their intermolecular bonds and their covalent bonds. So we need to be able to, to, to determine the total energy, the potential and kinetic energy, which we will term enthalpy. So enthalpy we are going to designate delta H. Well, H is for heat or enthalpy, and the delta means that we're going to determine the change of enthalpy. We can't directly measure enthalpy because we can't easily determine the potential energy of the intermolecular forces, the covalent bonds. But what we can do is we can measure changes of energy as one chemical reaction could release heat. If we determine the energy being released, we could then assume that we know the energy from which it came from, and that would be its enthalpy. So, we cannot measure directly, but we can measure changes in, and that's what calorimetry is going to be all about. Its units are going to be kilojoules of energy, and if it is a positive change, it is going to be designated I'm sorry, if it's endothermic, we are, going to make, uh, we are going to designate it positive, and if it's exothermic, we are going to designate it negative. Well, how do you know if something is an endothermic reaction or an exothermic reaction? Well, recall from Science 10 that endothermic means energy is going into the system, okay? Endo means in, thermic means energy. Energy must be going into the system. So imagine an example here of ice melting. Well, the system is ice, okay? The system is right here in, in the ice, and that ice is absorbing energy from the surroundings. So if energy is going in, that means it's endothermic. So melting is endothermic, and it's pulling the energy away from the surroundings. So the surroundings are losing energy. The surroundings are getting cooler. So if the surroundings are getting cooler, we know it's an endothermic change. The opposite, of course, is exothermic. An exothermic change is when energy is leaving the system. So an example here is uh, some kind of fire being produced through some kind of chemical reaction. So we can definitely see that energy is going out. All right, and if energy is coming out of the system, remember here is the system, energy is leaving the system, and where is it leaving? Well, that energy is going to the surroundings. So that means the surroundings are getting warmer. So if the surroundings are getting warmer, that means it is an exothermic reaction. In the future, anytime referring to an enthalpy that is endothermic, we are going to make sure that we are indicating it as positive. And if an uh, enthalpy if is, is negative, if energy is being lost. So if it's exothermic, we are going to put a negative sign. Okay, the next podcast is going to look at how you do calculations involving energy, enthalpy.